So now when my coworker Tim says, takes a picture of his brunch and he says, brunch was so good today. And he creates his post. It updates his feed and it updates my feed. So I got a notification, he got a notification and everybody on the system is getting real time notifications when anybody posts just like that. So there you have it. There is a basic Instagram feed without a single line of JavaScript in Phoenix Live View in just about 20 minutes. Hi, my name is John. I go by John Elm. Today, we're going to build an Instagram feed clone without writing a single line of JavaScript, and we're going to do it in just under 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's create a new Phoenix Live View project with Mix Phoenix New. We'll call it Finsta for fake Instagram. This is going to scaffold our Live view project, we'll go ahead and say yes to fetching and installing dependencies. And some of the things that I really want to showcase here is going to be mix Phoenix Gen Auth, how easy it is to get user authentication, registration, and login in a new Live View project. We're going to show off Phoenix Live View Streams, which makes it really easy to manage large collections on the client front ends without keeping a bunch of memory or collections stored on the server that's really gonna bring down your server side memory usage. And the next thing that I wanna talk about is gonna be how easy it is to use live file input to manage file uploads in forms. On top of that, we're gonna be using all of the new Live View core components. And these things just provide niceties of like modals, inputs, buttons, forms, things like that that just make it really really easy and really really fast to build web applications like this one all right so our project has been created so let's go ahead and get into that current directory let's set up our database and then once that's done let's go ahead and run mix phoenix gen off this is going to set up our registration and login for us We'll say yes to the live view based system. So let's go ahead and get these new dependencies and migrate the database. So once this is all done, we can go ahead and kick off the server with IEX mix vhx.server here. And then it's available now on localhost 4000. We can see that we have a new Phoenix live view project. So let's go ahead and sign up for Finsta. And we can see that our account's created and we'll return to the home page. But we want our logged in users to go to the actual feed. So we're going to redirect people from this, this route here back to a new live view that we've that we'll create now. So let's go into the router. Let's grab this default route. Let's move it to the redirect if authenticated. And then over here in our authenticated routes, let's go and redirect people to slash home if they're logged in. Let's go ahead and create that home live view now. Call it home live. So finstaweb.home live. And we need to use finstaweb live view. So let's implement the two required callbacks for a live view, which is going to be render and mount. We're not going to need the params, the session, just the socket. So let's go ahead and return OK socket there. And we'll give this a little bit of bigger extra text. We'll call it Finsta. And we need to update in our user auth here the signed in path to re redirect us to slash home if we're logged in. Otherwise, we'll get in this endless redirect loop. So here's our feed. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to implement the ability to create posts. So to do that, we're going to take advantage of Mix Phoenix Gen schema here. Call it post posts in the posts table. We'll give it a caption, which will be text. The image path will be a string. And then the user ID is going to reference the users table that Phoenix Gen Auth set up for us. So that'll be our foreign key right there. We'll call Mix Ecto Migrate. Created a schema and a migration for us. And here's our new post schema. Let's change this to a belongs to association. 
That way we get the full user struct back when we preload it from the database. And we'll cast user ID and we'll also validate that it's required when we're doing our change set validations. So finsta accounts user and our post should all be good to go. So let's create a form here to actually create a new post. So to do that, let's make a form assign. We'll say form is gonna be a post. We'll make a change set, an empty change set. And then we'll say to form and we'll give it a name of post on the, on the form name of post. So let's alias finsta post.post. .post. Let's also alias the post context just so that we don't forget we'll need that later. And then our socket, let's assign the new form to the socket form form. So in order to actually use this form, let's use the simple form core component for at form. And we can start putting some inputs on here. So this will be for the form caption. And we'll make it a text area and we'll give it a label of caption. We'll say it's required. So now I've got a caption box. Let's give a submit button here. Disable with equals saving and create post. So we've got a caption and a submit button, but we need to add our picture input. So we'll use a live file input for that. Let's see uploads.image and we'll make this required as well. In order to enable file uploading in a live view, we need to call this allow upload function on the socket. We'll say image, we'll say we're going to accept PNGs and JPEGs and max entries will be one. We'll just do one picture per post here. The next thing we need to do to enable file upload is we need to wire up the Phoenix change and the Phoenix submit events on our form. So let's do that now with the handle event callbacks. Handle event, this will be validate. We don't need the params at this point, socket. And for file upload, we just need a basic, basic handle event call. So that'll do for now. And then save post here. That'll also be basic for now. So now we have our form. We've got a file input, caption, and submit. But we want this view to be the feed as well. So let's hide this form in a modal. And the way we can do that is really simple. We can just wrap it in this modal core component. And say new post modal. And there we go. In order to launch the modal, Let's make a new button. And on Phoenix click, we can just say show modal. And we'll just pass the ID of our modal, new post modal. And we'll say create post. So now our button is launching our modal and we have everything set up here. So this is great, but nothing will actually happen when we submit our, our post form. We need to actually implement the save post callback here. So let's get our post params out from the param sent to the event. And we need to put the image path and the user ID in our params. And the way that we can do that, we can get the user ID from the socket already, Phoenix Gen Auth, because we're behind the require authenticated hook. The current user is actually available to us already in the socket of signs. So that takes care of the user ID. Now the, uh, excuse me, the file input is going to be a little bit different, but this code here that I just pasted comes straight from the live view docs. And it just copies the uploaded file over to our priv static uploads directory, as you can see on this line here. So the next thing that we need to do to enable file uploads is we actually need to create the priv static uploads directory. It can be just empty for now. And then we need to update our static paths here. 
we need to add uploads and that's going to allow the front end to actually look at those image those images that we upload and use them as the source attribute on our image tags in the template. So once that's all done, we can go ahead and say, let's put the image path in here. We want the first, everything comes back as a list. So we'll take the first item off the list to get the image path and then we'll call post.save. We need to define post.save. So let's create our post context. We'll say finsta.post and we'll say def save post params. And let's run it through post.change set, pass it the params, and then we'll call repo.insert. Once we do call post.save, we need to case on the either OK post we get back or the error change set. And in the event of an error for now, just for simplicity's sake, we'll just return back to the socket. The basic form validation will take care of what we need there. And then in the case of success, we're going to show a success message to the user. With put flash, we'll say post created successfully. And then we are going to push navigate back to the home page. And the reason we're doing push navigate instead of push patch is because push patch will not allow us to close the modal because it'll just invoke handle params, keep us on the same process. Whereas push navigate will put us on a new process and it'll close the modal for us so we don't have to fiddle with sending JavaScript to the client from the server. So once that's put in place, we should have the ability to <clears throat> need that here. We should have the ability to create a new post. So let's go ahead and do that now. And say I heart elixir. We create our post and if post created successfully, which is great, but we don't actually see anything on the front end yet, and that's because we're not loading any posts from the database. So we're gonna do that with live view streams, but we only wanna load the posts if we are connected. So let's use if connected, connected to the web socket. If we're connected, we wanna do this. Otherwise, we'll just return the socket. But if we aren't connected, we wanna communicate that to the user. So we'll say loading true. If we are connected, say loading false. And then we can implement a new function head of render where if we're loading, we can just say Finsta is loading. And then once we are connected, we'll jump back in here to the connected render. Now, in order to display all of our posts, we're going to need to have a container since we're using streams, it needs an ID. We'll call it feed. It needs to have this PHX update attribute set to stream on it. And we'll display everything here in a column. And we'll say for, we'll iterate through our posts from the special stream assigns. And we need to say, we get a DOM ID and a post. So we'll set the ID of our element to DOM ID. We'll say classes MX auto. We'll display everything column wise, gap to P4, order rounded. And then in here, we'll want to display the actual image of our uploaded picture. We'll show the post user the email of the person who actually made it, made the post, and then we will say the post caption as well. So we need to load these from, 
from the actual database. So to do that with a stream, we just call stream here on the socket. We'll say post list posts from the context. So let's define that now. Let's do that with an Ecto query. Say list posts. And we'll say the query is from P and post. Select posts. Let's order them by most recently inserted first. So we'll order descending by inserted at, and then preload. We'll preload the user association so that we can display the email of the user who created the post. So we'll repo all query here. And that should get us our post displaying. So here's our post that we just made. It says I heart elixir, which is great. So let's make a new one. I can say Phoenix rocks, create posts, and it gets added to the top of the list, which is great. But what if there was another user on our platform? Maybe my imaginary coworker, Tim, says, hey, I want to get on, on Finsta. And he wants to make a post. And he says, just got my ticket to ElixirConf, which is great. His post worked, but I didn't get notified and my feed didn't get updated. So let's add the ability to broadcast new posts to all the users on the system, as well as notifying the user when somebody else posts. And that's really easy to do with LiveView. All we need to do is let's subscribe in here when we are connected to the posts topic. So anytime someone broadcasts a message to, we'll subscribe to posts with Finsta pub sub. Anytime somebody broadcasts a message to this posts topic, we'll be notified. And then whenever we create a new post, we wanna let everybody else know on the system that, hey, we just created a post. So we'll broadcast this. Let's say broadcast Finsta pub sub posts. Let's say I got a new post and of the post that we got back from the database. The one thing that we need to do is because the user association won't be loaded when it comes back from the database after that insert, we'll just put the user in there so that the we can still display the email from this broadcast <coughs> user. In order to handle this message, we just need to implement the handle info callback. And when we receive a new post message, we can annotate the socket with a notification here. We'll say post user email just posted. And then we insert it into the stream of posts. We'll put our post in there and we'll say at zero. So that gets put at the top of the stream. No reply, then we turn no reply socket. So now when my coworker Tim says, takes a picture of his brunch and he says, brunch was so good today. And he creates his post, it updates his feed and it updates my feed. So I got a notification, he got a notification and everybody on the system is getting real time notifications when anybody posts just like that. So there you have it. There is a basic Instagram feed without a single line of JavaScript in Phoenix Live View in just about 20 minutes. If you want to learn more, if you want to know how we can implement followers, following likes, comments, and do a little bit of testing, please visit the link in the description at johnelmlabs.com to download the code and get notified when the full course drops. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks for listening.